All right, welcome back, and we're doing the walk around, seeing how the political parties are set for uh, the campaigns before ahead of next year's general elections. And we turn our attention to the People's Democratic Party next, and asking the question, how prepared uh, is the PDP? Charles Aneogu is a spokesperson in the PDP's Presidential Campaign Council. The pleasure to have you join us, Charles Aneogu. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Pure. Excellent. And I, agree, I guess it's a fantastic morning also to you in uh, Asaba, the Delta State Capital. So straight, straight ahead, I'm sure that, um, you know, it's a week, a very, very interesting week we have ahead of us. We've got the campaigns, the presidential candidates will sign a peace accord also to uh, later on this week. But a party I'm sure that is in dire need of peace also to will be the People's Democratic Party. Um, recent developments suggest that uh, your party is in crisis. But help us understand how the PDP is moving ahead despite all of the problems it has uh, with, next, with this Wednesday's opening of the campaigns? Well, thank you very much for raising these issues. I can tell you that uh, as a political party, and of course uh, the leader of the party who happened to be the presidential candidate of the party at this moment, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, we have all been looking forward to this week. Uh, what makes this week unique to us is that it gives us the opportunity to unveil a number of uh, the programs that we have to address the many challenges confronting our country and being, being to move from um, what is known to also the unknown with a view to letting Nigerians know that we have got what it takes to be able to fix the many challenges confronting us today as a country. You mentioned in the course of your intro the issue of, uh, issue of crisis for us in the PDP. We see it as the many sounds of democracy, which affords individuals the opportunity to ventilate their grievances and express their views. And at the end of the day, all those views are processed for the purpose of uh, reaching a consensus that um, has uh, the element and principles of democracy uh, seriously ingrained in whatever decision that is uh, reached at the end of the day. The issues you are calling crisis, as disturbing as they seem, are some of those things that democracy allows, the latitude for individuals to have a uh, plural views. And then, this plurality of views makes democracy tick. But at the end of the day, what is most important that at the end, that the uh, end uh, product becomes service to the people, to the majority of the people. And so we are quite prepared for this week, looking forward to letting Nigerians know the difference between our political party, between our candidates and other political parties and their candidates. We will, and we are promised to stay on the issues to ensure that um, we respect the rights of every other Nigerian to aspire but at the end of the day, Nigerians will be very well informed that Atiku Okowa stand tall among the many persons who are seeking to become the leader of this agreed country in the next um, couple of months, specifically from the 29th of May, 2023. All right. Uh, so nice to have you on the show once again. All right. The PDP um, campaign council list is out and some names are surprisingly ornate and one wonders if some things have been smoothened behind the scenes. So tell us about the Campaign Council and how it's been constituted, how it got to be constituted at this point in time to have names of those many people were not expecting and how this would affect campaigns as they start on Wednesday. The Campaign Council is a clear uh, list, is a clear manifestation of the determination of uh, Atiku and Okoa to carry everybody along. You could see in other political parties, they have even missed out those who either contested against them or those who have uh, been able to hold the uh, views that are at variance with the views of those who are seeking to lead our country. Atiku says as his number one agenda is to unite the country, and in doing so, he requires that you carry everybody along, irrespective of the views they hold or whatever they profess at their own uh, circle. We have, as a political party, been able to put everybody together because we believe that these individuals are very, very important. There are a number of other individuals who at the moment may not even be on the campaign list, but have been contacted for the purpose of uh, playing a very, very critical role in the course of the campaign because the campaign council cannot be an unwieldy list. Uh, so that at the, end, at the end of the day, you are able to get everybody on board. We have 36 states and the federal capital territory. There are individuals who are not on the campaign council, but we play a very, very critical role at the state level. Don't forget that every politics is local. It starts from the units as the polling units. It progresses to the ward level. And then from the ward level, it goes on to the local government, then to the federal constituency. And of course, the senatorial district, then the state before you now come to the national. That is how it graduates. So each individual have got a role to play. There are individuals who play a very, very critical role at the ward level, at the unit level, though they are not on the campaign council, 
but they are also uh, involved at different other levels that uh, they will be able to play that role of uh, conversing for votes and letting the electorate understand what Article Okowa stands for and how they are going to be able to address the many challenges. We are quite uh, comfortable with the campaign council that we have been able to put together. I know you may want to ask about those who have indicated interest not to be part of the campaign council. That does not mean they are not going to be part of the campaign itself, because like I said, it is not only those in the campaign council that will be working for the party. And so we are moving on. The week has come, and in the, about two days' time, we'll kick up the campaign to begin to talk about those issues that are first Nigerians. We are going to run on a number of things. One, the credibility of our candidates as the president and the, uh, the presidential candidate and his running mate. We are going to run on the strength of what the party have done in the course of time, particularly the first 16 years that he had to as the lead, uh, as the main, the leading political party in our country. We're also going to run on the strength of what our presidential candidate did as the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and what he has done even outside government. We are going to run on the strength of what Senator Okowa, as the governor of Delta State, have also done, both in his days in the Senate and of course uh, also uh, today that he's the governor of a Delta State. All this we will put on the table and we'll put it side by side with the, the challenges confronting our country today. Right. We are not interested in most thinking. We are not interested in such anybody. We are not going to undermine the rights of every other Nigerian to take a shot at the number one position in the country. All, All right. that we will look at with a view to ensuring that Nigerians understand where we are coming from and what we ask, what we set out to do. Well said, Ms. Anyagu, but then many people would say if you have a, a member, a 520 member a council, and some are saying emphatically that they won't be part of it, you've said that your campaign will move ahead regardless. But that does not really say that all is well within the party, even as the campaign starts. We still have the issue of Governor Wiki insisting on the removal of the chairman of the party, and there are even some insinuations as to who they may, the camp may want to uh, get as a replacement. How does this crisis, because Nigerians want to hear about it, they don't want it masked up, how is it affecting the campaigns? as they start on Wednesday. Let me tell you that both the presidential candidate and the Governor Wiki and many others in the party are on the same page on a number of issues. The only difference is you of timeline. The presidential candidate, the chairman of the party and other leaders of the party are, are, are agreed on, are, are on the same page as to the need for us to uh, bring about some form of balancing in the party with a view to ensuring that you have a, a north-south balance, the point of the president and from the point of the chairman of the party. But what we're saying is that the timeline that we need to be able to do that is such that if we begin to engineer that process now, it will trigger a whole lot of turbulence that may not enable us to keep our eye on the goal. And that for us to be able to keep our eye on the ball so that we're able to score the goal, we need to be able to tarry a while. That is the only point of disagreement. There is no other point of disagreement on these issues. And so if you understand that that is the point of disagreement, you will discover that indeed, uh, you understand that it, indeed it is not um, as troubling as individuals may want to paint it. Because we have got a law in the party which we need to protect at this moment, and that for you to engineer the processes that will lead to either amending that law or causing a change in the leadership of the party, you will need to be sure that you don't unsettle a whole lot of uh, processes, both in terms of the uh, National Working Committee and in terms of the geopolitical divide. That is the only point of um, a disagreement. And all those are being discussed. We are happy that uh, the discussion is ongoing. We recognize the rights of every member of the party to be able to express their views. We respect them as members and leaders of the party. We are very much convinced that they have, in the course of time, contributed immensely to the development of the party. We are also pleased that they have made it very, very clear to all that cares to listen that they will remain in the party and that they are very much uh, interested in the strength of the party and that the reason why they are making their demand is that they believe that if that demand is um, uh, hit, acceded to, that there is a possibility of everybody moving in the same direction. We don't have any problem with moving in the same direction. We're only saying that even as we move in the same direction, we need to be able to, we need to be cautious not to trigger certain processes that will cause a whole lot of um, uh, disagreements or repos that may unsettle our uh, keeping our eye on the ball. For us, we are seeing what's happening in other political parties where those who disagree with them, they give them names. We don't give names to our people.
because we believe that it's within the democratic uh, rights of our members to express their views. I have listened to individuals um, calling the likes of a uh, former uh, speaker of the, uh, uh, the House of Representatives, Dugara, the former secretary to the government, uh, Babachi Lawa, calling their names as uh, hypocrites or whatever. We don't believe that that is the way to treat mem your members who have contributed to the growth of your party. Oh, right. And that is why in the PDP, we will continue to respect our members, irrespective of the views they hold, believing that in the course of time, we'll be able to find a common ground. And, and, and that's, that's the issue, the time. How much time do we have right now? Wednesday, the campaigns will start. The election, governor, the the governor, governor, one is moment, one minute, one moment, Mr. Anyago. Wednesday, the campaigns will start. Governor Shea Magidi of your State is supposed to be the vice chairman of the campaign council uh, handling the South. And he's still demanding for the removal of the chairman of the party. So if he, the party, is going to saddle him with that responsibility and he says it is this or never, isn't this a very, very worrisome signal? The chairman of the campaign council is Udom Emmanuel of Akwaibom State. Governor Shere Makindi, our, our governor and leader that we respect, is the deputy chairman South. He's going to be assisting. But even if at the beginning he is not available because of uh, issues that are still being discussed, we believe that in the course of time he will join in the uh, helping the campaign council to formulate uh, programs that will indeed uh, culminate in the eventual uh, victory of the party. At the moment, you must also recognize that uh, Governor Shane Mackindy is a governorship candidate uh, in our party, and that there are a number of persons he's also going to be assisting in terms of the campaigns in uh, your state. We are believing that because of his strength, he's not only going to concentrate, even if he has uh, opponents that he's going to be squaring up with in Oyo State, we are believing that he's not only going to concentrate in ensuring that the party wins in Oyo. We are quite convinced that he will also assist us in mobilizing a number of persons in the Southwest, even when he's not uh, kickstarting the campaign council with other members of that council. So don't let that uh, disturb you so much. In the party, we are dealing with it. The presidential candidate has been able to ensure that the issues are not what he takes to the media. He is reaching out to a number of persons. He is also has been able to also uh, put up a number of uh, other leaders who are interacting at different levels with uh, these are other uh, members of the party, leaders, as it were, that have a uh, divergent views. Uh, we do not begrudge them for holding those views. Those are some of the things allowed in any democratic setting. But we are quite convinced that between now and five months' time, when the election will be taking place, we would have been able to, in the next couple of weeks, find a common ground as we hit the road, campaigning and conversing for votes of uh, Nigerians. And uh, the only issue what we regret is that in discussing these uh, differences, we've not been able to indeed put forward uh, the many programs that we have as a party and uh, for the candidates to be able to unfold his five-point agenda to rescue our country that's the only challenge we have but as to the fact that individuals who divergent views we are quite very much um, aware of the uh, principles of democracy that majority will have their way even as the minorities will have their say but in our own case we are not only looking at the minorities having their say we want to move along with the minority so that whatever view they expressed is also taking along the consideration of those who are in the majority so that at the end of the day, we are able to indeed unify everybody. Otherwise, if you begin to look at the number, you may be saying, after all, democracy talks about majority having their way. Atiku is not looking at what the majority will just do. Atiku wants to carry everybody along. And that is why we are reaching out to these our other leaders in the party to get them to join the majority views in the party that believes, just like a number of them too, that the presidential candidate of the party is the man to form the next government by the grace of God in 2023. So Charles, you know, like we say, in search of uh, the illusionary United House, and it's a lot of what people in several parties are searching for, whether it's with the major parties or with the minor parties. But what, what would you say, um, when, when uh, my colleague Shea brought, talk, talked about Shea Makinde, it got me thinking when you said, um, um, a common ground and um, they have their own campaigns also to run. W w is your party looking at a kid, pro, a, a, a kid pro quo sort of situation where because you don't support the presidential candidate in this campaign, we're also are going to be withdrawing our services to you when the campaign begins. Are you going to have that sort of situation play out uh, for the campaign for those who are grieved with the party? Nobody's going to do that. 
in the first place, Shai Makinde is not telling you that he's not going to support the presidential candidate. He never said that. He's only saying that at the moment they don't want to be uh, to kickstart the campaign council with other members of that council. So he has not at any time said he's not going to support the presidential candidate. So I wouldn't want anybody to uh, label him with uh, whatever he has not said. And for us, the campaign is that of the party. In Oyo State, we are very much interested that Shai Makinde will win. We will join him in campaigning for him to win. We are also very much aware that there are a number of other uh, down ballots, particularly House of Assembly, House of Representatives, the Senate, that will also be running in that election. We will support all of them for the purpose of getting them to clinch victory so that at the end of the day, the party is not going to only uh, to be formed by Atiku and Okowa. For the PDP to be successful, they must also be able to have a reasonable number of persons in the down ballot because the policies you are going to be implementing for it to trickle down we require the, uh, the involvement of these individuals, whether at the House of Assembly level, the House of Representatives and the Senate level, which is very, very important, because for every policy that we're going to drive among these five key points that Atiku is putting forward, we will require in some areas uh, some amendment to existing laws, and of course the enactment of a new laws for them to come into effect. You have listened to the presidential candidate when he said that the number of uh, the reforms he's going to introduce whether in terms of having a very hand warm shake with the private sector or in terms of ensuring that the, uh, the component units of our federation, particularly the local government and the state's level, have, do have certain levels of uh, responsibility far beyond what they have at the moment, or in turn to ensure that power is uh, taken away from the exclusive list such that states are also able to generate at their own level with a view to addressing the many challenges of power and then by extension trigger developments in our economic sector or also how to ensure that the educational system function and function effectively for our people to prevent this issue of um, continuous uh, interruption of academic calendar all these will require the involvement of a number of persons that belong to the down ballot specifically those at the senate level and those at the house of representatives level but not also undermining the powers of governors to be able to help drive uh, that consensus and so that being the case we are convinced that for us to make progress that we will require the services of everybody being brought to board and that is why we will join Sherry Mackinde and every other of our contestants across the 36 states and the federal capital territory for the purpose of getting them to win that election so that when we win at the end of the day it becomes easier for us to operate and operate effectively all right. I'm, I'm, I mean, a push comes to shove. If you have your way, you probably will look at the uh, number of um, PDP leaders who are incumbent governors, governors who've been taking a large part of the media, uh, you know, for their advantage rather than for the party's advantage. Take, for example, Governor Yeeson Week of River State. He had that uh, press conference last Friday. Last uh, Friday, um, people have described it as damaging in the, in the allegations it made against the party and um, you know the party's chairman. What, what would you have preferred? You, you think it's better that you had Wiki out of the PDP uh, than for him to remain in the party and yet uh, do more damage to the party from inside than from outside? We will not wish that Wiki leaves the party. We need him, we value his contributions, both in the course of time, and we also believe that he's just, he's just helping to expand the discourse that is allowed within a, a, any democratic setting. Those who are very much are those who have not been able to get you to uh, get acquainted with uh, the principles and the, uh, the different things that are oppressed in any democratic setting. Democracy allows plurality of views. Democracy does not mean that once you are headed in one direction, that everybody must move with you with, this, with the same speed. The wheel of democracy grinds very, very slowly, but at the end of the day, it brings majority on board. It doesn't even say that in the democracy that everybody must be on the same side. It only says that the majority will be on the same side. And that the policy that you are going to put in place will also address the needs of majority. And so if in the course of time you have a quite a handful not agreeing with you, the only thing we are doing because we believe that we must move to everybody is to continue to speak to their conscience, hoping that whatever that possibly is a disturbing or agitating their minds, is something that they believe and trust us enough to be able to address. Once we're able to get their confidence, we are quite convinced that in the course of time, they will make a U-turn and possibly begin to move in the same direction with those of us that are already uh, moving ahead with the issues of the campaign and the need to rescue our country. We are quite um, optimistic that in the course of time, yes, on weekend, we 
of course, joined the presidential train, but we must also commend him for what he's doing in Rivers, that he has said he will work for the emergence of all the candidates in Rivers State. The only thing we are saying is that beyond working in Rivers, because we understand your abilities, please join us so that you also assist us in a, uh, taking over some other states where we will not have uh, equal strength as we do have in Rivers. And so nobody in the party is wishing that we can leave the party. So even if he himself wants to leave, we will beg him not to leave because we are very much aware of his abilities, uh, both in terms of uh, governance and in terms of uh, policy formulation. Well, I like that. However, it, it too seems as if Governor Wike is a concern. What are other concerns that the party has as the uh, campaign begins on Wednesday? Well, I wouldn't know what you may want to cause concerns. We are already dealing with all the challenges we have, for instance, the number of candidates that you have on that will be having on the ballot is a concern that we believe that uh, we need to convince Nigerians so that we don't have some votes that um, possibly fall within the realms of voided votes or wasted votes. We are also uh, taking advantage of what's happening in other political parties to also re-engineer our processes and then get excited about the things we have identified a long time ago that individuals are beginning to see now. We are also believing that as we make progress, we will be able to convince a whole lot of Nigerians. We are happy that Independent National Electoral Commission is um, at least positioning itself to be able to organize a very credible election. We're excited about the, uh, the promise by the president to ensure that we'll have a, an election that will indeed uh, be adjourned to at the end of the day to be credible and then to be fair to all. And so for us, we are looking at all the issues on the table. What stands us apart from others is that we do know what is constant and what is uh, what uh, falls within the realm of variable. Nigeria is constant to all of us. It's our country. The need to get it to work is constant to a number of the contestants. The challenges that we have today, particularly in the last seven years, is also constant. It's also constant. So all these we are going to put together and address them. So if you see them as concerned, yes, they are concerned that they are touching Nigerians, but we are very much convinced that we'll be able to deal with them. All right, it's so amazing. We'll still with you in just a moment. We just want to take a very short break. And uh, when we come back, we'll continue with the conversation, uh, the line of conversation we're having with uh, Charles Aniago, the uh, Information Commissioner for Delta State and spokesman for the PDP uh, Campaign Council. We'll be back in just a moment to stay with us. Morning Nigeria. Year after year, they have informed, educated, and entertained us when you needed information, knowledge, or an escape. From generation to generation, the Nigerian broadcasting industry has worked tirelessly to serve you. And now, this service will finally be recognized. This November, broadcasters all over Nigeria will gather for the maiden edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Awards, an award ceremony set to reward hard work and unflinching excellence in the broadcast media. They have served and are still serving. It's time to say thank you. This award is organized by the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, BON. For more details, log on to www.tnbawards.ng and follow social media handles at TNB Awards. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs, including PJ News and Program, Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. 
37 delegates have been selected for this year's most beautiful girl in Nigeria beauty pageant. Now you can vote if you prefer a candidate for a spot in the top 15. To vote, simply visit our website at www.mbgnsilverbird.com. Click on the link, select your preferred delegate and fill in your details to complete the process. Remember, there are five titles to be won, so vote as many times as possible to give your candidate a better chance of winning. The power is in your hands. MBGN, the true essence of beauty. Welcome back, and we have still with us Charles Aneagu, who is the spokesperson for the PDP's Presidential uh, Campaign Council. And uh, great to have you, Charles, still with us, and uh, we're touching bases on a number of issues affecting the PDP as we head towards the campaign, which begins uh, from Wednesday. And w while we've been talking and looking at um, just what the issues are and how uh, the party is, this is going, like they say, what's and all, uh, into the campaign season, uh, there are things people have also asked, you know, whether the PDP has learned lessons also to um, being in the opposition for the past eight years and heading to the campaigns. What, what, what would you say as being the main opposition party um, in the last eight years, uh, the national level, is the biggest takeaway going into the campaigns? The major challenge that the party had as an opposition party in the last seven years is not different from the major challenge you have in our country. Like it is often said that you don't go into a rotten mouth and begin to look for a heady teeth. So the general malaise you have in the country, and then you see certain things affecting uh, every segment of our society. And so when you see that individuals end up because of too much infrastructure, but because of too much infrastructure, is not able to uh maintain the position that ordinarily that they should you begin to wonder why that is the case and so as a party to be able to perform and then do what they needed to do at the level of the opposition you see that majority of those who are even in the ruling party today were at one time in, in the in the past members of the pdp and what that tells you is that we are still suffering from our inability as a country to have political parties develop very very strong a, a philosophy which of course you want to call the, not just their manifesto but ideology because manifesto could change you could begin to say okay this is what we want to do manifesto is like weather while ideology is like climate climate is over a period of time why weather changes day to day and so for us to begin to develop that political system where you now have those on the right and those on the left so that if you grow up and this is where you belong you know, just like they have in a place like United States, when somebody says, I'm a member of the, the GOP, that is the good, good party. You know, he's talking about the Republican Party, which, of course, uh, preaches more of uh, what you call free market economy. And then that is what the, AP, the PDP uh, it stands for, largely, in, in uh, Nigeria. But the social, the social Democrats in America talks more about um, having to uh, help the people more rather than a free market enterprise. And so the moment we begin to put that together, we now begin to have political parties, whether they are in power or in opposition, that have an ideology. And then you have their members following that ideology so you can define who they are. And so we are believing that in the course of time, every political party will have a, a proper identity that whether in power or out of power, that identity remains constant. But what you must not take, a, what you must give to the PDP is that today it is the only functional political party that started since 1998. All the other political parties have demonstrated some form of chameleonic uh, tendencies, changing their dresses, changing their logo, changing their color, changing their name. The PDP, just like the Northern Star, have remained very, very constant. The umbrella is constant. The color of the party is constant. The name and motto of the party is constant. The philosophy which the party have espoused of uniting the entire country has been very, very constant. And Atiku Abubakar will take that forward by the time he comes on board in 2023 by the grace of God. And of course, being in the opposition has been quite challenging because we have not been able to develop, due to this absence of a political philosophy, we've not been able to develop a system where individuals, no matter how poor they are, will believe in their political party and they contribute. It's the same thing that happened even in unions. If not that unions, like I'm talking about labor unions, 
take processes to collect funds from either the salaries that are owned, you will discover that members will not even pay their dues because sometimes they don't even understand that they need to do that for the union to stand. All right. Members of the political party, same thing, most of them are not, I don't pay their dues. So once you begin to get members, show ownership, pay dues, you will no longer see where one individual becomes a holier than thou and bigger than everybody and want to make the political party his personal estate. Those are some of the challenges that the party have grappled with in the course right. of the last seven years that it has been in the opposition. All right, many Nigerians will say that they, they had seen uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP in, in his capacity as the vice president of the country for 16 years. And many of them would say that uh, the, the, your, your candidate has also had vied to be president a couple of occasions, a couple of times. But what is the vice presidential candidacy of Governor Kowa bringing to the table as the campaigns begin on Wednesday? Now, let me start from the issue of the presidential candidate of the party. He wasn't the vice president for 16 years. He was vice president for a period of eight years, even while the party was in, in power for 16 years. And for that period of eight years, every Nigerian who was um, above 18 years and was politically conscious at that time uh, do clearly understand the roles he played with uh, respect to headhunting those persons who contributed immensely that you may want to regard as poster boys of the, the Abbasanjo administration. They, uh, he assisted the Abbasanjo administration to go beyond the realm of politics, to identify individuals who are Nigerians have got the ability to contribute. And those individuals played very, very critical role. I don't need to mention their names, but you know those that at that time that led to the principle of saying, uh, technique, uh, what, what do you call them, some um, technical persons or uh, professional persons that were in politics. And they will say, no, it's a technocrat in, in politics. The way a lot of them that you saw then, and they played very, very critical role. Some of them in the course of time have now gravitated towards uh, becoming a, a, a strong politicians. Some became governors. Some have also been able to uh, hold sway at different levels and uh, also uh, helping us at the international level. That tells you the, the person that uh, Atiku is made up of without bias to even a particular region or, uh, or religion. Now coming to his running mate, Governor Kowa arrived from his days as local government chairman up to where he became the uh, commissioner three times and secretary to the government in Delta and eventually becoming a member of the Nigerian Senate and then becoming the governor of Delta State had demonstrated one thing, character and integrity. And within that character and integrity, he has also been able to look at the issues that are faced the Nigerian people. He is the architect of today what we see as the contributory head scheme in the, in the federal government and which we are also implementing here in Delta. And if you want to speak specifically to what he has done in Delta, which of course is a microcosm of the Nigerian nation, the major achievement of Okoa beyond infrastructure and human capital development is the unity and harmony that exists in Delta State today. For a very long time, you have been hearing and listening and watching Delta State in the news for the very good reasons. What are those good reasons? That we no longer talk about Ishekiri, Ijo, Urubo, Isoko, or Anioma, but rather that we come here and we not talk about data. And so what you hear, speaking uh, pidgin English as we use it here, is data not a carry last. We have been, he has been able to unite us. And that is one thing that is lacking in our country today. That once you come up, they say, no, who is, is a Fulani man, is an Aosa man, is an Igbo man, is a Yoruba man. That has not helped us. Atiku Okowa will have the capability to manage our diversity such that other symptomatic issues that flow from the mismanagement of diversity will be addressed. The issues of not having the right persons, what you may call right, uh, right, uh, right uh, square, peg in a square hole, is because of the mismanagement of diversity where you are not able to recognize that across the length and breadth of this country that there exist individuals who have got the ability to be able to add value to our country. Atiku Okowa have got that ability to headhunt, headhunt in terms of a uh, hunting for those who are, who are going to be being to bring talents. These talents are those who are going to help them to engineer the processes they have, they have been uh, properly encapsulated in the five-point agenda. You may want to ask, what is even the job of the president? The president is not a medical doctor. He may not know uh, medical terms of what happened in the health sector, but the experts he is going to bring in will tell him what is the right thing for the Nigerian people in the health sector. The president is not an engineer. He may not know the quanti right quantity of cement to combine with the right quantity of um, uh, chippings to be able to have the right pillar or beam when you are building a, a bridge. But once you have experts in that direction, they are able to help you. 
the president is indeed a man that is going to be saddled with the responsibility of bringing talents and uh, persons together with a view to ensuring that the right decisions are taken and the right the right implementation policies are also brought on board. And so, Atiku Ukowa are those individuals that have got that ability to identify those talents, to identify those capacity, to identify those individuals, even far beyond the politics of the time, in which case they are not just going to be looking at members of the PDP, they will look at others, even if you are in any other political party, even including the abysmally, uh, what's it called, the abysmal party that has performed very abysmally, the APC. If there are individuals within the APC that can do well, Atiku Okowa will go and bring them because they are Nigerians. And we will not sacrifice them on the altar of politics. And that is what makes the Atiku Okowa ticket very, very unique. All right, we're going to have to leave it at that. And it's always a pleasure and delight to have Charles and Eagu uh, speak with us. Thank you very much, and do have a wonderful day. Excellent. Charles Ndegu, uh, presidential spokes, the spokesperson, the Presidential Campaign Council, PDP. And do have a great week, too. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, there's more for us to talk about, about this crucial campaign season, which begins on Wednesday. Please stay with us on News Hub. <laughs>